Hello, everybody. So now we're going to talk about, um, same thing with Jean de Transform, but we're going to talk about Gibbs free energy now. Now, Gibbs free energy is given by this. Sometimes I forget. That's Gibbs free energy right there. Um, that can also be written as H minus TS, things like that. But basically, that's Gibbs free energy right there. Now, um, we're going to do the same thing we did last time. To get this, I have to sort of, I'm going to start out with my fundamental first law, as always. You're going to get sick of this first law by the end of this course. <laughs> fundamental first law. Now, you're going to say, wow, now we have a PV and a TS. Those are terms that I cannot leave alone as I'm manipulating this whole equation. So now, I'm going to take my du and say that that's equal to Ts minus, or sorry, dts minus dpv. Now, how can I write these in terms of these, right? I know that um, dts is equal to tds plus sdt, right? And I know that negative dpv is equal to negative PDV minus VDP. Cool. Now, I have a negative PDV term there, and I have a negative, I have a TDS term here. So, I'm just going to subtract this here and say that, um, here's what I'll do. So, TDS is equal to D. TS minus SDT. So I'm going to go ahead and write that here. Minus SDT. Okay? And I know that negative PDV is equal to negative DPV plus VDP. Right? Cool. So I can go ahead and say this is equal to this. So now what I've gone ahead and done is gotten these into differential form. And I know that I have a minus TS here and a plus PV here. So I'm going to add a PV here and, and subtract the TS here. So I get the DU minus, let me say plus, just because I wrote it like this, plus DPV minus DTS is equal to negative SDT plus V, D, P, okay? Combining all of this, I can say that D, U, plus P, V, minus T, S, equals negative S, D, T, plus V, D, P, right? What is this? Gives free energy, right? That being said, I can go ahead and say that this, the differential of Gibbs free energy, is equal to negative S D T plus V D P. Now you might be saying like, why on earth would I do this? Why is this useful? We have these things called Maxwell's equation, Maxwell's relations. And basically you might have to take the difference, the, 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 the slope of the pressure in respect to like the temperature at constant volume or something. Or you might have to take, uh, constant entropy or something. And basically what I'm trying to say is that certain things might be harder to hold constant or to see what's changing with respect to something else. So we can sort of equate those to other things and say that, hey, it's a lot easier for me to keep pressure constant instead of entropy. So why don't I go ahead and find a relation for pressure and entropy and, and use that to track the change in certain things? And I know I'm sort of speaking abstractly right now, but Basically, that's why these are useful. And you'll see what I do once we talk about Maxwell relations. It sort of, it sort of um, comes into play here. Um, this is basically just another Legendre transform that you can use. And it's, it's sort of good so that you don't have to memorize a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I hate memorizing things, in all honesty. If I can derive something, it's a lot easier for me to remember it. So 
that gives free energy right there. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, shoot me some suggestions if you have any. Let's keep learning demo. Thank you.